Hey there friends, I am here with a third Mac Mini and this one has zero parts of it converted so let me walk you through all the things I was mention mentioning with turning the Mac Mini into a Linux PC. So I'm just double checking and if I go and look for the App Store it tells me I have still got to be on iOS 11. And, uh, if you go to this machine and you tell it to update, it won't let me update to iOS 11. So that's why my Apple Mini is just out of luck. Uh, the furthest I can get is 10.5.8. So I'm not going to install any of those. I'm just going to shut it down and I'm going to show you how to uh, make it a Linux computer. So I'm hitting restart and I am holding down the alt key and I don't care about all those things so I'm just gonna hit quit so I'm holding alt I'm holding alt and I'm holding alt waiting for it to pop up the little uh, emergency boot window or the boot options window there goes about 10 seconds I am using a Windows keyboard and there you can see it's got uh, a disk inside it's got a recovery disk I'm going to press F12 to get that out, or is that a recovery hard disk? Looks like that one's actually built in. And then this, unlabeled, is the awesome Puppy Linux CD that I'm going to boot off of. And I'm going to show you how this works the first time it boots, and I'll show you how to uh, partition the hard drive so you have an area to save your Puppy Linux, and we'll also show you how to set it up once you get it all the way in. So this is my EFI boot, and I'm just going to use the arrow keys to move over and press enter. This is the first time this computer has ever booted like this, so I don't have to answer any of these other questions. I can just press enter for the find grub, and I'm going to press enter for the start uh, Zenial pup, and let it do its thing. One of the things Puppy Linux brags about is that it can fit its entire operating system in your system's RAM, and that's what makes it zippy as well. As I show you, I am booting off a CD. You can also boot off a USB flash drive. If you boot off a flash drive, you can save the environment to that flash drive so it'll work the same on whichever computer you plug it into. This first boot takes the longest. Um, you'll have to stare at the black screen for a moment or three, but I promise you it is worth it because when you're done you'll be able to add apps and use your little Mac Mini just the way you want to. And there you have the Puppy Linux um, first boot menu. I'm going to change my time zone to Detroit, which is close to home for me. Let's see, there's America, Detroit. Keep the keyboards because those are all what I have. I'm going to keep um, the stuff on the left. I'm going to call this... Uh, a5 because this is the fifth little mini I built and then I'm gonna press OK to wrap up this page I'm looking down here at the bottom of my screen and these are the things that um, make me happy I can see that I had my network and I had my sound working I'm gonna hit restart X because it wants to change my screen size for me which I'm gonna say OK and there you go you could hear it actually bark and we'll get that internet connection working I'm going to just click this little arrow right here. I'm going to choose a wired LAN. I'm going to do the simple network setup where it just checks for the DHCP server. I want to use my 
uh, ELAN Zero, although you can see it also has the uh, wireless if you wanted to try that. And it was successful. I'm going to make that my default and tell it OK and set as default and tell it OK. And I have instantly got a sweet little puppy Linux system put together. Before I add anything to it, though, I want to give myself some special save space. And I'm going to do that by partitioning the hard drive. So I'm going to click on the little puppy menu, and I'm going to go into the system area and launch Gparted. It's got a partition manager built right in. I'm going to mess with the internal drive and tell it OK. And it launches Gparted. I want to take SDA2 and I want to resize it. So I'm going to just hit resize. I'm going to grab the little arrow and shrink it to about half of its normal size. Because remember, I can't do anything really useful on the Mac Mini part anyways. I'm going to take this unallocated partition and I'm going to make it a new partition. I am going to name it Puppy. And I am going to actually make it an NTFS petition because I use a lot of Windows machines and this way my Windows machines will be able to talk uh, to this hard drive if I choose to share it. So now I'm going to add it and hit the little check mark until it apply. It whips through that really, really quickly and I can hit close and I can hit close down here on the bottom you can see that my drives now appear actually they just disappeared right when I said that but now they're back and then this is how you quit the first time that you quit so I'm gonna do uh, menu exit and I'm gonna choose shut down and it's gonna ask me some magic questions it wants to know if I want to save, and I do want to save. It wants to know how I'm going to save it. I want to uh, do it as administrator. And then you could save to CD, but I want to save to one of my hard drive locations. I just made that NTFS folder, SDA4. And in SDA4, it's going to ask me how much space I want to use. I'm not going to encrypt it. I'm going to use ext4 and tell it OK. And then it asks how much space to save. I'm going to save uh, 512 meg. Uh, I'm not storing any files. This will just be like the uh, space where I want to keep things or keep my browser history and things like that. It asks me to uh, give a name and I'm gonna call this pup mini and tell it okay and I'm gonna say yes I do want to put it in uh, SDA4 NTFS that's the name for it pup mini 512 meg and save it and now it'll save that so that the next time I boot it'll be uh, with all my settings saved and it'll even boot faster After a minute or two, it says, do you want to copy the files it takes to launch Puppy to the hard drive? And you bet I do. That makes that boot so much faster because anytime you're pulling things off a physical hard drive, instead of pulling them off a CD-ROM, it is a much better gig. After several minutes, it asks you if you want to have a swap drive on that same hard drive. And I do want to have a swap drive, so it speeds up the rest. And I'm going to make it 256 meg in size, and I'm just going to hit uh, create. 
Now, I don't have a real good working knowledge of what would be the smartest size. That can be something you'd Google. Those are just what I use. These are just uh, fun little computers that I put together, um, and I'm not doing anything important on them. So there you can see it reboots, and it is going to shut down. It saves that session to Pup Mini, and it is all gone. Now, the only way for this to really turn out awesome is for me to show you how quick it reboots. Uh, so, let's see what version 2 looks like. I'm going to superimpose that little stopwatch on there. I'm going to hit the power button, and I am holding the Alt key, waiting for the chance to uh, tell it I want it to use that CD. So, every time I boot, I've got to stand by it to do the Alt key. But, it's what I'm willing to do so that I can choose whether I want uh, the Mac OS to launch or whether I want the Puppy Linux to launch. Alright, here comes my Puppy Linux CD. Press enter. And let's see just how long it takes. I'll add some music for you to watch. I don't have to press enter on that, but in an effort to speed it up, I'll press enter on both those. So, here we go. Wow, that's barely even enough time to have a song built in. But you can see I've got uh, CPU temperatures, sound, network, my little swap drive, uh, everything I did last time, including the, uh, looks like my um, clock doesn't have the right time zone yet, so I'm going to change that. Well, it shows America Detroit. I must not have had it um, updated yet. There we go, now it's 2.55 p.m. It had not synced, that's all I needed to do. So let me show you how to add an updated browser. I'm going to close these little windows. I'm going to click on the Quick Pet. Now Quick Pet can let you get updates, change kernels, get you a uh, search engine. There's a live chat. But what I wanted are the browsers. And I'm going to install Google Chrome. Uh, when you launch Chrome here, it just pops up a little browser window for you. I do not want to use Pale Moon, so I'm going to tell it no. And in Pale Moon, uh, I'm going to launch this one more time so it goes to the window. That first Pale Moon window uh, took away the one I was supposed to go to. Most people probably launch the browser ahead of time so that this has already happened and it doesn't ask that question. But it sim simply takes you to the Chrome download Chrome page. When you launch it, we want the uh, Debian Ubuntu and we do accept and install. Normally, you open with PetGet, but it is special. Uh, we need to save this one and I'm going to just save it to my downloads. And then when it's done, uh, I'm going to click on the little folder so it can show me. We just need to left click on it and we want to install it. So it's just left click and click yes. After a moment, it tells you that it has successfully been installed and it'll be in the internet menu. So I'm going to tell it OK. It's just updating a couple things. I'm going to delete the download by doing right click and I'm going to put it in the trash.
Actually, I'm going to skip the trash and go right to delete. And I'm going to tell it, yes, I do want to delete it. I'm going to close Pale Moon because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to close my little app add uh, tool. And now when I hit the menu and I go to Internet, there is the Google Chrome web browser. I want it default. I don't mind the stats. And I'm in just the way I'd like it to be. I'm not going to sign in at this time. But there you have it, friends. That's how easy it is to update a Mac Mini to be usable with an up-to-date web browser. And that way you can check out your favorite YouTube channels, just like HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching, friends. If you like the movie, please click like. If you haven't subscribed, click that little subscribe button. And last but not least, if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new movie from HL Mod Tech, click that notification bell. Have a great day, friends.